Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm coming to you today for the third, fourth part of healing school today. We're going to be talking about the broken hearted. That's had laid on my heart talking about the broken hearted and about how God is doing some things. Good morning, James and Rhonda. And so we are uh, are going to be talking about that and um, dealing with some stuff that's going on. And so today, it's such a pretty day. I don't think rain's going to be in the forecast. I feel like I'm a weather um, a weather person as I'm doing as I'm coming online. My son's calling me from South Africa, and um, so. He, say, he sends me a message, call me. I'm like, okay, I'll call you after the broadcast. So, so here we are. So let's get started. If you see the broadcast and you um, uh, sh don't forget to share it. And um, don't forget to share the broadcast with people they they may need to hear this so we're going to we're going to talk about in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 is where we're going to go today yesterday I went to the gym and I uh I was blessed because I got to talk to a personal trainer for about 15 minutes and in that 15 minutes he showed me a new exercise and um, in the process of showing me the new exercise, it was it worked out stuff that I haven't worked out in like years. And it, I woke up this morning and it was like I almost couldn't move. But it's okay. I'm going back again today because no pain, no gain, right? So here we are. So we're going to talk about in Luke chapter four, verse eighteen, and we're going to talk when we're going to talk about the broken hearted. Remember when I said God is the great physician. We talked about how God takes care of the whole body and how he took care of the bitterness of sin in our lives on the first part. And then on the second day, we talked about how he corrects the error and our doctrine or what religion says that they are. And then the, the third part yesterday, he, he had me deal with peace, to have peace of mind, to have the peace of tranquility all around you. And so today we're going to deal with the broken hearted now it says in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive recover recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised so here we are we are we we have some directives here as we know he goes into the temple jesus goes into the temple he asks for the scroll they give him the the scroll of isaiah chapter 61 what we would know and he began to say this and and then he goes and this is the acceptable year of the lord and he sits down and he begins to say and people got upset now the word broken hearted means to be broken it means to be shattered it means to have um things that are uh that are were once in your life is no longer no longer there uh to have a place of 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 brokenness where god has um broke down where um it it seems like you're crushed and you cannot be put back together and the uh old testament it means a breaking a pulling apart a, a um a, a shattering a something that comes apart and so the broken hearted people really don't understand how a broken spirit or broken heartedness um, uh, someone hurting you or someone taking your innocence or someone doing a, a, a something to you can cause you 
to have physical ailments in your body. It can cause you to have headaches. It can cause you to overeat. It can cause you to have um, pains in your joints. It can cause you to have weakness. It can cause you to have the ability not to see straight, not to think straight. It disturbs your peace. It disturbs your well-being because here it is, you thought that you that this person was a friend. This person was was someone who was dear and close to you and here they did this terrible and awful thing David says Dave, David says I believe it's in Psalms 55 or 56 one of those Psalms he talks about he says he says you ate at my table you were in my home and then you wounded me you you literally stabbed me in the back and you know that's what happens when when we are hurt we are we feel betrayed we feel that that someone has taken away a part of us that we have willingly gave them away gave it away to them and it was a personal part of us and it causes us to have a um uh an outlook on life and that maybe we shouldn't have and it gives the opportunity for unforgiveness, resentment, and bitterness to come into our lives. We can be betrayed by parents. We can be betrayed by brothers or sisters. We can be betrayed by people in the church. We can be betrayed by our husband, our children. It all comes, a co-worker, a close best friend, and it comes about through doing daily routine stuff in your life. And so it, it, it causes you to sometimes draw back and not want to move forward. It causes you to um, shy away from friendship, shy away from people. You know, um, one of the, the incidents that, that God brought to me was, you know, when, when Saul went after David and he was going to kill him. His wife, Michael, got a hold of this, Micah, Michael, and she told David, you have to leave. And she made a, a, a dummy, David, and she had him sled down the um, window. And that was the last time she seen her for, seen him for years because David wandered in the wilderness for almost 20 years. And so she was always hoping David would come and just sweep her away and bring him with her. And then I know she probably got word that he married uh, Abigail and that he married another one and that he had children. And so what happened was her father gave her to another man. And so with this other man, she had five children, the historian Josephus says. But when David came into Hebron, and after he was crowned king in Hebron over Judah, he, he went to war with Saul's house. And he told them, he told Abner, he says, send me my wife back. The one that I won with foreskins of killing the Philistines. And so she came back, but she came back a bitter woman. She came back resenting because her beloved, who she thought would have came after her sooner, waited all of these years. And then now she has reformulated a life. She's taken and she's made a new home for herself. And so now because of what men deem as property, she had to go back to David because see, when David would have left her, it would have showed he was a weak man because everyone knew that he had married the king's daughter. And so when she came back and then it, it comes to second Samuel chapter six, when they bring in the Ark of the Covenant and David is dancing violently before our God and he's doing cartwheels and, and everything. And she, and she tells him, she says, that is so unbecoming of King. And David says, I will dance more violently before my God than ever before. You're not going to tell me how to worship. And the reason she was so, so despondent about his worship was that she did not cultivate the same relationship with God. And so in that act, 
She never had any children with David. She was barren with the seed of praise. She was barren with the seed of worship. She was barren with the seed of, of coming into a promised land because David we know is the root of Jesse, who is the um, the father of that Jesus, the line Jesus descended from. And so she has no part in that line because of her resentfulness and her bitterness. But it stems from her being hurt. It stems from her being bitter. And so here you have where she this caused her to have this. And so I imagine she felt like somebody that was just thrown away. We have another incident. It's in it's in David's um, line, and it is where Tamara was a beautiful, beautiful woman, and he and it talks about her in Second Samuel chapter thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, and uh, sixteen. It talks well. It gives the outline of Absalom and her. Absalom was her brother, and her brother, half brother Ammon had desired and lusted after her. And that lust had drove him to the point that he was sick. He had lost weight. And so he was he he devised the plan with a cousin and he made his sister come in and he literally raped her. And in that time she wore the vestment of a virgin and he took and he she, when he put her out in the middle of the day, in the middle of the day signified that she was just some common woman, some common whore. And he put her out there and she rent her clothes and she was yelling. And Absalom comes upon her and says, be quiet, be quiet. And he put her in his house. And the historian says that she wore the robe of widowhood, never to be seen again. See, there's things in our life that we become brokenhearted over. And because we don't allow God to come in and change our headdress and change who we are and heal our brokenheartedness, then it causes us to put on a different veil, a veil that God has never designed for you to carry, a veil that he has never said that who you were. Tamara was never heard from again. She was almost like a throwaway sister. And in that one act caused Absalom to become a part and um, have unforgiveness and bitterness. And he murdered his brother. And then he went after the kingdom of uh, Israel that rightfully belonged to his father. And he was stealing it from him. And he was the he became king of Israel of the kingdom illegally. And so hurt and bitterness and resentment causes you to take on a identity that God has never designed you to take upon. He's never caused you to take upon that. He can't, there are things that happen in our lives that is not our fault. It is circumstances that we are put into and they come about because of sin. And the enemies came in to steal, kill, and destroy what God has caused you to be called to. And so you cannot blame yourself for things you had no control over. Or things that people do that you did not see coming. See, rejection is something that comes about because of broken heartedness and because of you feeling that this person rejected me. When David says, he came into my house, you ate my food. David felt rejected. Christ, when he was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forgot, forsaken me? He felt rejected from the father for the first time. And so rejection, when he came here in, uh, and Nazareth, and he said that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He was rejected because they began to say, Isn't this Joseph's son? 
Isn't this the bastard child of Joseph and Mary? How dare him say that the spirit of the Lord God is upon you? You know, it's just like someone coming up and telling you, oh, that's just Barbara. She, you know, she she's not, she comes from not a, a so good family. And, you know, you, you just don't know some of the things about her family. She's not worth it. And I'm telling you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And it also states that, in Psalms chapter 147, it states, in 147 verse 3, it says, He healeth the broken in heart and bind up their wounds. So God is near you to bind up your wounds. He's near you to, to take care of everything that is in you. And there are circumstances that you come in contact with that sometimes God allows. You know, think about it. Jesus had Judah, I mean Judas, in his um, 12 disciples. He knew all along that Judas was going to betray him. But he treated him like all the other 11. He was, he was open with him. He was vulnerable with him. He gave him food to eat. He let him be a treasurer in his ministry. He did all this and he still betrayed Christ. There are things that happen that God allows to happen to bring a tearing in you so that you know how it how and I hate to say this so that you know that you know that you know that God is there for you. The enemy causes it, but God allows it. It says in Isaiah 54 16, it says that the um the weapon is being forged, but God's already forged another weapon for you, and God's allowed it to be forged against you, but and, and the next verse, it says, no weapon that is formed shall prosper. So no weapon the enemy can think of is going to prosper in your life. And so it says in, in um, Psalms 57, 14, 51, 17, I'm sorry. It says, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou art not despised. In all of David's goings and all his hurts, he says, O oh God, I have a broken and contrite spirit. I am humbled before you. It says in uh, Hosea 6, it says, Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us. In other words, he, he tore. He has allowed us to be tore. Remember, Joseph was thrown into a pit. Taken and sold into slavery. Seems like everything is going okay. And then he's taken and he's sold to Potiphar's house and everything is fine. Then the woman, Potiphar's wife, lies on him. He's torn, literally tore the jacket off of him. He's tore, he's put in not just the, the jail. He's put in the depth of the jail, the inner part of the jail. And here he is, he becomes where he's over the whole jail and the jailer um, things. He's torn. He's torn from his family. He's torn from uh, whatever he seems that his life. See, some of us, we're starting to get our life back together and it seems like the rug is torn before us. That's because there is a, there is a, 
um, plan that God has for you that is so deep, that is so big, and the greatness in you, God, God says, I got to build some more on this um, foundation, and this is not the right place where you're supposed to be, so I'm going to tear you again and allow you to go to a different place, but in the last tearing, when I tear you out of the jail and bring you out, it's going to be, you're going to be in the king's palace. You're going to be doing what you're supposed to do. And so as we know, Joseph went from the jail to the second in command of Egypt and he commanded everything. He had a wife and then all of a sudden his brothers show up. Joseph had a decision to make. Do I throw him in jail and lock the doors and never find the key again? Or do I use this as an opportunity to have restoration in my life? See, there are circumstances where it seems that that person that caused the original hurt, that caused the original tearing, will come back around in your life. And this time when they come back around, they're coming back around as someone who's needing your help. What is your response? See, God, when Joseph first told the, told the dream, he was kind of like haughty. You know, you're going to bow to me. A typical 17-year-old. You know, I know it all. But when it got to the point, of his brother's coming and he gives them more and sends the money back and then he has to come back and they wanted to keep Benjamin and he says no you can't keep Benjamin Judah and Levi said that they would stay or Simeon and it showed a change of heart and so when they came he brought them into his chamber and he revealed to them that he was their brother and it was mended. And we know that's how um, Israel ended in uh, Egypt. But it was mended. They were saved from a drought, from everything dying up. See, your tearing and your brokenness can be for someone who's dying of a drought in the future. And you are the water that God has designed to bring to them, to set them free. See, there's been many of hurts. There was a, um, a, 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 a church I was involved in at one time. I was really close to the pastors. I mean, I cooked for them. I cleaned for them. I did uh, pastor's appreciation. I did a lot of things for them. And they turned around and they stabbed me in the back. They stabbed me really hard. It took a lot of years to recover from that because I was shy about giving a word of prophecy. I was, I know that's hard to believe, but I had to have healing in my heart. And then there was other incidents, incidences in church where people, it, it seems like it hurts more when it comes from a person in the body of Christ. And they came, they spoke against me, they did things against me, and I had to forgive. See, I tell anybody, and I have a lot of scriptures here that I can give you on brokenheartedness. I tell anybody... You don't have the right to hold forgiveness, unforgiveness. You have the right to forgive. Jesus forgave and he gave the ultimate price, which was his life. And it says to us that we are to die daily, deny ourselves and crucify ourselves and pick up our cross. And sometimes our cross is people speaking against us. Sometimes our cross is people doing what, what they do against you. And so you have to look at it. It's not you. It's the Jesus in you. And then you have to look at it. Remember yesterday when I shared about Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Sometimes it is God trying to develop his character of perseverance, of love, of joy, or peace. 
And so that becomes a part of you. Remember, it says in Isaiah 53, verse 14, verse 4 and 5, it states that he was bruised and the chastisement of our peace, the chastisement of our well-being. He was wounded for us. He understood betrayal. He understood it like nobody else. So it also says that in Malachi 4, 2, it says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow as calves in a stall. So you, even though you may be young or you may have uh, these hurts and it, and it seems like it's hurting you so much, God says, I'm going to arise with healing in my wings. And I'm going to cause you to be healed. And I like the one in Isaiah 50, Isaiah 61, 3, where it talks about, and God is so good. He's such a good God. You know, I always tell people, you know, if something keeps coming up in your spirit or you keep being reminded of something, then it is God trying to show you that you still have hurt in that area, that there's still a wound. And it's I, I, I picture it like an onion. You know, you have different levels. And so God lets it come over and heals. And he goes, oh, well, we got to kind of pick this off again and put another a layer of my anointing and eventually it doesn't hurt anymore. So in Isaiah 61 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. See you could be mourning about your past. You could be mourning about things in your life or rejections that you've had. And he says, I have came, and that, and that were beauty for ashes. It literally means that they wore a turban, and they had ashes on their head, and it was ugliness. And God says, I'm going to take all that ugliness. And I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to cause beauty to come upon your continents. And I'm going to cause beauty to be in your mind and in your thoughts. And when you think of this situation, it's no longer going to be a hurt. It's no longer be a, going to be a touch of bitterness to your mouth. It's no longer going to be those the things that, that disturb you. It's going to be something you look back and go, hey, I survived. I made it through. God set me free and I got through it and I am the one that's going to be. I am now clothed with beauty. I'm clothed with his salvation. I no longer have to wear that ash upon my head. I'm no longer a victim. I am someone who has overcome what the enemy tried to steal from me, what the enemy tried to kill me for, and what the enemy tried to destroy me. I will not be destroyed. I will not be killed and I will not have him steal from me. I am going to walk with the beauty of ashes in my head and everybody will see who my God is and what he has done. And then it says that he has a point. He gives all of joy for mourning. One of the parts of brokenness is that you have no strength. You have no joy. You have no fertility of life. Things are just blah. And he says, I'm going to come in and everything that you mourn, whether you mourn your innocence of losing it as a child for molestation, or you mourn your innocence of you married somebody and they left you, or you mourn because your parents are now gone, or you mourn because you're not part of a different of a community anymore, or you mourn because of ways that people have treated you, or you mourn because you, you've lost a, a husband. Been a, a loved one or something. God says, I'm going to come in 
and I'm going to apply this all of joy and I'm going to massage it into the area of your hurt and the area of your heart and with your beauty that I have already changed your mindset I'm going to change the inside of your spirit man and I'm going to cause you to be joyous I'm going to cause you to be fruitful I'm going to cause you to have tranquility around you and I am going to cause you to no longer mourn you will look back at this and say you know that used to be me but I'm not that person anymore I'm not who that person is you know, there was another Tamara in Genesis that was Judah's daughter-in-law and her son died. And as the custom is, you went from the next son to the next son and each one would die. And he was afraid for his youngest. And so what she did was because she had the right to bear a child in her husband's name. So what she did was she played the part of a prostitute and she lured Judah in and she had and she got pregnant with a child. And when he went to go and try to stone her, she says, "No, no, no, no. I have your ring. I have your cane. I have your robe. I have the right to have this child because you were denying it. And see the thing is is that you have to recognize who you are. Tamara took off her robe of widowhood and she became a mother in the tribe of Judah and she became one who bore fruit. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be joyous. When Ruth lost her husband, when Naomi lost her husband, Naomi says, I'm, I'm bitter. I'm, 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 I'm going to change my name to bitterness. And they went back to Bethel, which means the house of bread and she found her Boaz and she presented that first child to Naomi. Naomi became joyous. Naomi became one who was renewed. That's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be renewed with his joy. It says in um, Isaiah uh, 35, let me get the right, um, Isaiah 35, verse 2, it says, and it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy singing, glory in Lebanon shall give it unto the excellence of camels and the Sharon that shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellence of it. And then the, look at verse three, the strength, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees says, says to them that are fearful of heart, be strong and fear not behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense and he will come and save you. So in other words, God says, I'm going to bloom you where you are. I'm going to cause you to come and you're not going to have no more weak. Because when, when we don't have no joy, we are weak in our hands. We're feeble in our knees. We can't stand. He says, I'm applying the oil of joy. And then that last part, he says, he says, I want you to take off the garment of the spirit of heaviness. Remove it. And put on the garment of praise. In other words, sometimes we are our own worst enemies because God's already changed our ashes to beauty. He's already taken and put in the oil of joy. He's already strengthened our hands. He's already causing us to bloom in the desert. He's already causing our knees to be strengthened. He's causing us to, he's coming with a vengeance and his, and his, uh, his reward, his recompense is in his hand. He's going to take care of anyone that has came against us. It says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so he's going to take care of all that. You don't have to worry about that. That is far from you to have to worry about what's going to happen to those that hurt you. God says he's a just God and he has his vengeance comes and he'll come in his right time and in at his right moment. And he says, what I want you to do is stop being so melancholy. 
Stop being so down about everything. Take off that garment of uh, that garment of heaviness. Remove that heaviness from you. Get cast all your care upon me. All you are heavy laden and watch me come in and I'll take your yoke and I'll take everything about you and begin to praise me for who I am. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the God that heals your broken heartedness. I am the God that won't break you, that won't take your fi fire and burn it out. I am the God that comes and hovers over you and picks you up and sees you when you were down. And I've nursed you under my wings and pinions. And I've taken and, I, and, I, and I've smeared in my oil and I smeared it in and I've changed everything about you and I've come close to you. Now take off that garment of heaviness. Put on my praise and begin to t and begin to praise who I am. Begin to praise what I have done. You know when the children of Israel was delivered from Pharaoh when they went across the Red Sea and on the other side, it would have been very. They could have kept on that garment of heaviness. Oh, we were once slaves. Oh, look. I wonder if they're still coming. No, Moses began to to sing the song of the Lord. He began to praise God for who he is. And Miriam, the prophetess, picked up her tambourine and the women began to go behind her and sing and dance before the Lord. God's read a great, great victory in your life. He's taken you. You could have been dead, but you are still alive. You could have not woke up this morning, but you're still alive. You could be on the street with no food, no clothing, no air condition, no nothing, but you're sitting in a house watching on the internet. You could have nothing into your name. You could be destitute, but God has delivered you. You may be someone that, that says, oh, well, I have this and that, but I don't have love, but you do have love. You have people around you that are willing to love you if you allow them to love you, if you allow them to be a part of your life. And and if nobody else loves you, God loves you. I love you. It's a part of you putting on. Yes, you may have been torn. Yes, you may have been through circumstances. Everybody goes through circumstances. Everybody goes through trials and tribulation. It just depends on how you're going to come out and how you're going to stand. It may have been everything was taken from you, but what are you going to do? Is God going to be God or are your, are your circumstance going to dictate to you? It says in Habakkuk, Back of chapter 3, verse around 16, 17. It says, if the fields never bloom, if the calves never come around, if nothing ever happens, I will say this. God is still God and I will still praise him. What is your what are you seeking God after? You know, in, in Psalms 34, verse 18, 16, 18, it talks about that God is near to the brokenhearted. He knows that you can't handle this. It can make you put on weight. It can make you not have all this. He says, but look, he says, stop looking at all those stuff. Stop looking at all the hurt. Stop looking at things in your life. Just begin to praise who I am. Watch what I'll do. I'll plant you by that river. On that bank. In the boundaries and the confines of my word. And I will cause the river to flow. And when that river flows... It will bring life to you. It will bring joy to you. And you will be as a tree of righteousness planted. And you'll grow big and strong. And people can come to you. And they can pick out joy from you. They can pick peace from you. They can pick love from you. They can pick temperance and goodness. And all those different fruits. And then because your leaves are gifts of symbols. They become healings to the nations and to the people. What are you going to do? Are you going to let the ashes of your brokenness stay just like that? David never did. Jesus never did. Peter never did. Paul never did. I never did. I picked up the ashes and I went forward. Pick up your ashes. 
Go forward in Christ. He's given you everything that you need. He's such a good God. He's such a wonderful God. I can't, I can't even express. And then he does he, some things. Are you just after what he can give you? Are you after what who he is? See, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. I want to know who Christ is is. I want to know who he is. I want to behold him. I want to look in his face. I want to just be near him. If God never blessed me another time, if he never gave me anything else, it still, I will praise who he is because I don't praise him because of what he gives me. I don't seek his hand. I seek his face. And because I seek his face, he answers me and he draws near to me. Because I want to know. You know, it says Moses knew his ways. The children of Israel knew his acts. If you only know the acts of God, you will not stay near. Because you've tasted, you have not tasted the trueness and the love of who God is. As it says in Psalms 34, 18. I mean, 34, um, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, taste and see who he is and watch what he will do. I want to leave that with you today. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Throw off, forgive those that, um, that have done you wrong. Don't let a root of bitterness as in Hebrews 12 verse 15. Don't let a root of bitterness show up in your um in your uh spirit throw it off good morning debbie throw it off and allow god to wash over you and renew you and be free because see once you're free see i can look at things back when i was a child it's like oh yeah that happened but it's not affecting me of who I am because I've thrown it off I've allowed God to change my headdress I've allowed him to come in with the oil of joy and I am on my way of becoming a tree of righteousness I'm growing and that's the same with you the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me to preach the good news to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted God is here to heal you. Now, I want to just pray for you. Father God, every person that has experienced rejection, hurt, been mistreated, have had injustice, I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. I bind all the spirit of rejection and bitterness and unforgiveness, I bind those spirits. And Father God, I ask that you come in and you begin to renew in them their heart, Father God. Lord, cause them. And see, forgiveness is an act of faith. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When you say, Father, I forgive this person, you're walking by faith. And then when you say, Father, I will not hold a root of bitterness, you are walking by faith and God honors that because that's what's in his word. And you say, and Father, I forgive this person in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for holding any unforgiveness. Take away the bitterness that is in my heart because I do not want it. I do not want resentment. Take away the resentment in my spirit. And Father, cleanse me. Create in me a new heart. Lord, change my headdress. Lord, put in the oil of joy. Lord, the, the brokenheartedness that I cannot heal on my own. Father God, you put the bomb of Gilead in there. Have the son of the of righteousness arise and cause your healing to come in my life, Father God. Lord, I thank you for that, Father. I thank you. Lord, I take off the garment of praise and I put on the spirit of 
of a garment of heaviness and I put on the spirit of praise right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for this, Lord. I praise you for this, Lord. I, I, Father, I reach out to every person in ministry that's ever been hurt. Lord, I ask that you go in and you literally remove it, Father. Just just do a, 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 a ectomy. Just literally cut it out and pour in your balm of Gilead, your oil of joy right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, begin to just heal them, Father God. Lord, there's some that feel like they can't go on because of the hurt, Father. Lord, just literally right now under the sound of my voice that, Father God, that you literally just come in and you put in the oil of joy and you literally let the bomb of Gilead come in and cleanse their heart, cleanse their spirit, take away, Father God, let all the sores, all the sores of hurt, all the sores of resentment be burned up by your Holy Ghost, by your fire right now, and singe clothes never to come about again. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you're healing people, Father, and that you're bringing a wholeness to them, Lord, that you are near to the brokenheartedness, that you heal those, Father. And and Father God, I thank you for this, Father God. I thank you, Father, that you are doing this. Lord, that you're healing every person that was, every child that was a minister's child, that you're healing them, Lord, of things they have seen in ministry that has caused hurts, that you are beginning to heal them in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for this right now in Jesus' name. You know, there's a song that I used to sing that I uh, I was going to pull up, uh, but I couldn't find it on my computer. And it was, um, uh, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look where you are now and where you have been. Hasn't he always come through for you? And he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. And see, God will. He'll do it again and again and again and again in your life. So today, I just want to close with God is near with the brokenhearted and that he gives you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that you might be a tree of righteousness planting. And remember, Isaiah 61, 60, verse 1 Verse 1 says, to arise and shine, for your light has came. Arise, let that light that's in you begin to come alive. Isaiah 50, 42 verse 3 talks about that he'll not put out a broken, a bruised reed. He'll not put out a smoking flax. If you have a little bit of fire towards God, he will not put it out. He will cause it to come about and be a flaming, raging fire again. So today I want to leave with you. Become that raging fire with him. Become that person that is that is coming alive in Christ. And he will renew in you a new spirit, a new place. So that you can take that and go to the next person and you can be healing in their spirit as well. i like to thank each and every person for joining me. I see someone join from uh, the UK, thanks Cindy uh, Gear and um, uh, Debbie and James and Rhonda and my husband Jason and everybody else. If I didn't see your name, thank you for joining. Don't forget to share the broadcast. Someone else could be broken hearted and needs to be healed and peace needs to be spoken to them. Uh, tomorrow, which is Friday, we will actually talk about physical healing. And then that night we will have intercessory prayer and we will be praying for the sick. We'll have praise and worship. So if you're in the Hammond area or this region, come on out to 2126 Skinner Drive and Hammond, Louisiana. And Come on out and we will have worship and a good time in prayer. And then we'll lay hands on the sick and watch what God will do. And then we'll have service on 
Saturday. I mean, on Sunday at 12 noon is our regular service. We put that on Facebook. I may try to put Friday night service on Facebook. But it is for people to come and be healed and people to come and be delivered. That's what God spoke to me about the Friday night's prayer. And so, and it's also to teach people how to intercede for their for what they are going through. So I want to close with that. Thank you, Fred Thompson. I want to close with that. Um, and I will see you tomorrow at 1130. God bless. Thank you for everyone that came and shared, uh, shared this time with me. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow again at 1130. Bye-bye.